Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about electric current, which is one of the foundations for our modern society. If you think about all of the appliances you use in your everyday life, all of the electronics, they all depend on current to power those devices. And understanding current helps us to understand how all of these things work. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So maybe you're in a physics class and you need to know something about current. Well, this is the right place. So let's go ahead and start talking about it. First of all, I do want to say that current is named well because current, electrical current, has similarities in terms of concepts between current of water as it flows. So if you just think of water flowing down a mountain, you can also think of current flowing over a conductor. And just as we can say that the flow of water can be used to do useful mechanical work, we can also say the flow of electrons or charges can be used to do electrical work as well, like light up this light bulb. If you've ever thought about how much better your life is because we have learned quite a bit about electricity and magnetism, it really is amazing to think about. All right, so let's go ahead and see how to use an equation for current and solve a problem for current, talk about AC versus DC and so on. All right, so first of all, there is an equation for current, and this is helpful for understanding what current is. This is not the most common equation to use in physics, but I think it's one of the more helpful ones to understand what's going on. Current is the amount of charge passing through a given area divided by time. So it's the rate at which charge is flowing, you could say, through a given area, like the cross-sectional area of a wire, for instance. Current's represented by I, and charge is represented by Q, and current has units of amperes, or amps for short. So by definition, we would say one amp is equal to one coulomb of charge crossing through a cross-sectional area per second. So one amp is equal to one coulomb per second. And one amp is quite a lot, actually. So it's a fair amount of charge passing through a cross-sectional area in a second. All right, and well, let's build on that idea. We have talked previously about how a battery works. And I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that screencast in the upper right if you're not sure what I'm talking about. But a battery has a collection of overall positive charges in an area where you have an overall collection of negative charges here. And then there is a separation, a barrier between them where positive and negative charges are attracted to each other, but they cannot get to each other. And what happens is when you set up a circuit, when you have a conductor that allows electrons to flow, what's really going to happen, the actual current, is that these electrons over here are going to flow all the way around. So first of all, they are repelled from each other. Electrons are repelled from other electrons. So in the very first half of this, they're pushed away from each other along the conductor. So a conductor, like a metal wire, has outermost or valence electrons that are held very loosely. You can almost think of them as a sea or an ocean of electrons around the nuclei of the atoms themselves. So those electrons are held very loosely and they can just slide along from atom to atom, so to speak, and continue on. Well, they repel each other. So if you have excess electrons, they move from each other. And then when you get to about halfway here, they are still being repelled from each other, but they're also being attracted over to the positive side of the battery over here. And then when you have enough of these negative charges flow around, then eventually when they even themselves out, then the battery becomes dead. And in the process, you can put something in the way, something that provides resistance, like a light bulb, for instance, and those flowing electrons, those moving electrons, that's what electricity is. And we can measure that flow of electrons with current. That's what we mean when we're talking about current. Now, that's actual current. What is unfortunate is there is another way of talking about current. When people say current, they're actually assuming that positive charges are moving. And that is because when experiments were first done on current, we didn't know enough to know the positive charges weren't moving because the positive charges are in the nuclei of atoms. They're just in the middle of the atoms especially if we're talking about a solid, right? The metal isn't flowing itself. It's the electrons on the outside of the metal that are flowing, you could say. Well, we started out by talking about conventional current as if they were positive charges moving. And so if someone were to say current and they don't clarify, we are going to assume that you're working with positive charges flowing around here, at least as an idea. It still works. It's just backwards from reality, so to speak. So it is unfortunate, but if you just accept it and understand it, you're going to be totally fine. 
that this basic idea of conventional current is assuming positive charges are flowing around to the negative side of the power source. And that actually corresponds with things that we know about the electric field, for instance. The electric field is all based on the idea of what direction would a force be on a small positive test charge. So the assumption in electricity is we're going to be dealing with positive charges and less noted otherwise, you could say. All right, so one way to simplify these drawings is to say conventional current is going to go from the positive side of the power source to the negative side of the power source. So conventional just means like traditional or the type of current that is normally talked about in this case. But what is actually happening is you have electrons flowing from the negative side to the positive side of the power source. All right, so let's see an example problem where we use this equation and figure out what's going on. So the example problem we have says the amount of current that passes through a certain light bulb in two seconds is minus 1.33 coulombs. Find the current in the light bulb and how many electrons pass through the filament during the two second time interval. If electrons have this value of minus 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So this is just a fundamental constant, a fundamental value of the charge of an electron in terms of coulombs and the charge of a proton is exactly the same magnitude just with a positive value for its charge. All right, so then we look at this and we say, all right, I is equal to delta Q over T and we have T and we have this delta Q. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in our numbers and we end up with an answer of 0.665 amps. Pretty straightforward. And then if we look at the second part of the problem, we know what our delta Q is. We know how much charge passes. So we know how much total charge we have. And we also know that one electron has a certain amount of charge over here. So then this becomes a dimensional analysis, like a conversion problem, you could say. So we're gonna go ahead and do that conversion. So we have our total charge, and then we're gonna convert into electrons, so to speak. And we end up with this amount of electrons here. So that's how you would go about doing a problem using the equation for current. Lastly, I do want to mention that there are two different types of current. So there's direct current and alternating current, at least the two types that we need to be focused on. And direct current is just going to be current flowing in one direction. Alternating current is going to be flowing back and forth, usually like 60 times a second. So it's a very high frequency of flowing back and forth. And it happens so fast that like a light bulb, for instance, just looks like it has a steady light to us, even though it's actually alternating with time. It gets brighter and dims and gets brighter and dims. But if it does that 60 times a second, our eyes and our brains cannot interpret that very well. And it just looks like a light bulb, so to speak. Now there's a lot to say about direct current and alternating current. I will say that there are benefits to both, but probably the most useful type of current is going to be the alternating current. And there was a historical fight between Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison over this. And there's a semi-recent movie that has come out about this as well. Worth watching, definitely. Let's just say Thomas Edison doesn't turn out to be all that nice of a guy. But for now, you just need to know that direct current is a steady flow of charge from one side of the power source to another side of the power source. And alternating current is charge that's moving back and forth in the circuit, back and forth at a very high rate. And that back and forth motion of charges can be used to do useful work. And that useful work allows for all of the electronic devices that you use in your everyday life to be able to function. So hopefully this has been helpful. We're going to talk through some other ideas. If you have any comments, please let me know down below, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.